dear uh, brothers uh, in christ uh, so once again uh, thank our lord for uh, still counting us among the living and giving us a uh, opportunity to discuss uh, about his wonderful life, words of life from uh, last few days uh, we have been studying uh, very very important uh, topics uh, in the bible so today also we are going to see one of the important topics in the bible as to why god permits uh, evil in this world seeing the conditions in this world as soon as we entered this uh, you see decade we saw a, a massive uh, epidemic you see the covid uh, because of which the entire mankind was captivated uh, in the house and uh, many such uh, incidents uh, which has been uh, you see uh, rocking around the world the great crash in the stock market and financial crisis uh, is because of which uh, the people uh, the laborers uh, had to leave the to their hometown and suffer and starve we have seen the buses uh, full crowded various uh, terrorist attacks um, uh, various uh, problems in immigration where the children are separated from their parents and uh, Uh, some uh, children are even uh, isolated uh, you see are even left by their parents uh, just to die like that uh. while seeing all these conditions dev uh, drain a question passes to our mind why god is not stopping all these things why god is permitting all these things sir uh? you see so many people are suffering in various ways in this world why god is not stopping all this civil in this world dear brethren so this is the question which everybody in this world has each and every person in this world seeing so many problems in this world have the same question in their mind why god is permitting all these things why all this evil why these things are happening You see, dear brethren, and uh, some people, you see, they even question God, saying, "Oh Lord, don't you have eyes? Can't you see? Can't you hear? You see." So, dear brethren, why, why all these things are happening? Many people who don't get their answer to the questions, you see, they decide to a better end the life instead of living in this world. When a earning person, you see. suddenly passes away with the family the family has uh, no way to go you see and they you see cry and put tears uh, you see the children uh, will be in totally shock and the only question uh, that comes to our mind is that uh, why god has taken away our loved one why this uh, sudden things has happened in our life uh, imagine dear brethren if only child in the family if he passes away the same question is asked by the parents the oh lord why you don't have mercy what wrong did my son do what wrong did my child do that you have taken him uh, may have taken him away you see dear brethren uh, these are the questions uh, that uh, comes to everybody's mind uh, imagine parents seeing their children dying in their hands the pain in their heart uh, you see the lamentation uh, they put the question why god there were so many people have died in disasters tsunamis uh, earthquakes uh, floods uh, accidents why 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 god doesn't stop all these things sir why there is a differentiation in the society why some is rich and some is poor you see why somebody has everything why somebody doesn't even have basic things to eat food why this difference why some people uh, even starve to death they even don't have proper water to drink they don't even have the basic uh, amenities to eat then why dear brethren some people you see they have everything 
you see, even good studies also. We go to school, but some people, they can't even afford to go to school. Why is this difference in society? Why somebody are having everything? Why is somebody are lacking everything? Why these differences, dear brethren? You see, the whole world, you see, has this question. Why, why, why? Why God has made all these things? Why so many differences? Dear brethren, the Bible says that the entire world is the creation of God. And we are all His family. We are all of God's family. That's what the Bible says. Sir. Let us read Ephesians 3.15. Ephesians 3.15. Can somebody read Ephesians 3.15? Abhishek, brother. Okay, I'll read. From whom the home family in heaven and earth is named. See, of whom the whole family in heaven and the earth is named. So we are all part of God's uh, family. Then why is this difference in God's family? One is I, one is low. One is rich, one is poor. One is very educated, one is, uh, you see, illiterate. One has everything, other doesn't have anything. Why this difference? Dear brethren, just imagine if we have a family, you see, and uh, if we have uh, two children in our family, you see, if you have two kids, uh, will we make such difference? Will we make one kid as a doctor? And we will make one kid as a beggar? No, dear brother, we would never make it so. Being a parent, we will give our best to the children. That is what our Lord Jesus said in Matthew 7, chapter 9 to 11. You see, which of you, when a son asks for bread, shall give him a stone? Which of you, if a son asks for the fish, will he give a serpent? You being evil, you see, no, what good things to give to your children. Doesn't the Heavenly Father know what good things he needs to give to your children? Dear brethren, then why God is not giving good for everybody? Why these differences, dear brethren? You see, why God is making partiality in this world? Why these uh, differences in his own family? We are all God's family. Dear brethren, this is the question which each and everybody in this world definitely would have got this question at least once in their lifetime. Seeing the condition of the world, seeing the problem, the sufferings in this world, definitely the whole world would have got this question, dear brethren. So, when we ask this question to somebody, the answer that is generally given is that... Uh, it is the devil. God is not doing anything. It is the devil. Satan. He is the one who is doing all these things. He is the one who is doing evil. Okay. If Satan is the one who is doing evil, what is God doing? The Bible says the God of the Bible is the almighty God. He has all power to restrain the devil. The Bible also clearly says that Satan is going to be bound in a thousand years. Read Revelation 20, verse 2. Can somebody read Revelation chapter 20, verse 2? Okay, I'll read. Hmm. He laid hold of the dragon, that serpent of old, who is devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. And bound him for a thousand years. Dear brethren, you see, God has the power to bound, uh, bind Satan for a thousand years. Why has he allowed Satan now? So you see, if you ask the question, the same question again comes to the mind. That why? Why God is allowing it? Why doesn't he bound uh, uh, Satan now itself? Uh, dear brethren, again the same question comes. Why? So again, you know, some people will tell, oh, no, no, it is not the devil. It is God himself is doing uh, so God himself is doing evil. The God himself is doing good. What does God do evil? Does God have something to do with evil? 
Let us read Psalms 5, 4. Psalms 5, 4. Uh, Binod, brother, can you read Psalms 5, 4? Okay, Emmanuel. Uh, okay, read, Emmanuel, brother. Okay, sir, I will read uh, Psalm 5, 4. For thou, not a God that had pleasures in weakness, and neither shall evil dwell with thee. Amen. See, God doesn't have pleasure in wickedness. Uh, neither shall evil dwell with him. So evil uh, is not there with God at all. Then why will he do evil? You see, then again the question comes, why all these things in this world? You see, dear brethren, the same question was uh, actually this is searched uh, uh, by Gautam Buddha. You know, Gautam uh, Siddhartha was his name. You see, Siddhartha, he was a prince uh, in the palace of his father. His father never allowed him to go outside uh, of his palace, uh, you see, uh, so that uh, he should not see the evil in this world. So he was nurtured in the palace itself. Uh, so one day when he had come to the age and his father was not in the palace, he went out uh, and saw the sufferings. Some people are dying, some people are old age, he is crawling around, some people are suffering, they are working hard, uh, taking the dead body, some people lying sick. Uh, all these things when he saw, the question came to his mind, why, why, why? Why all these things he will? Why God is doing all these things? Uh, so once when his father returned to the palace, he put the same question to his father. Why father, I am living happily while my, you see, huh? our uh, citizens of the kingdom are suffering so much. His father could not give the answer. He told, go and collect, uh, you see, a bowl of rice from the house um, where there is no tears. He went around begging for a bowl of rice. You see, even for a grain of rice, nobody could give him. You said him because every house had tears. And when he returned empty handed, he could not get his answer. He decided to quit his, uh, you see, uh, life and went out to the forest uh, to meditate and get the answer from the Lord. But okay, did he get the answer if you see? No. He never got the answer for it, dear brother. And similarly, many people who don't get the answer come to the conclusion that there is no God at all. Seeing the wonderful creation of the mighty stars, the sun, moon and the various planets, who can say that there is no God, dear brother? When all these things, creation is there, definitely there should be a creator. If there is a creator, then he must be having the wonderful plan and the Bible is the only book that gives the answer for this question from the Bible. Dear brethren, today we are going to see the answer for it from the Bible. The Bible says that, dear brethren, God was created, uh, you see, God created man in his own image, you see, in his own likeness uh, and gave him the dominion of the entire earth. So what do you mean by likeness? Uh, does it mean that as God is, did he create the man in the same way? No. What does the Bible say? How is God? Let us read John 4.24. John 4.24. Sahaja Budar, can you read John 4.24? Sahaja Budar, are you there? Yes, brother. Am I audible? Ah, clear, brother. John four twenty four, brother. God is spirit, and uh, his worshippers must worship in the spirit and in truth. Very good. So God is a spirit. So he is not a fleshly body. He doesn't have a fleshly body like human beings. But he is a spirit being. You see, so God is a spirit being. He doesn't have a you see body like us. So we are fleshly beings. Uh, so there is a difference. Uh, and what is the meaning of likeness? Likeness means all the characters which God is having was in Adam when he was created. And the main feature of God's character is that uh, he has a oh, free will. 
He has his own free will, which he can exercise whichever way he wants. If he wants to decide and select good, he can do it. If he wants to select good, he will. He can do and select uh, evil. This is the same way it is in this image that Adam was created. That means he had his own, you see, will where he could exercise towards good or towards bad. He was never created like a robot that you should only obey what God has told. He was made a free moral will agent which he can exercise whichever way he wanted. This is the image in which Adam was made, dear brethren. And uh, you see, when Adam was created, God created Eve for Adam also. You see, from the you see um, ribs of Adam, you know, the cloning process, the way I am in science, it was almost the same way that God, uh, you see, made Eve out of Adam. So Eve came out of Adam only and she was not uh, separately created. Hence, all the creation of God, when God had originally created, were perfect. None of them had any defects or any, you see, imperfection in them. Everybody were perfect. Let us read Deuteronomy 32.4. Emmanuel Buddha, can you read Deuteronomy 32.4? Okay, Deuteronomy 32.4. He is the rock. His work is perfect for all his ways are judgment. A good of God of truth and without inquiry, in inequity, just and right is he. See, all his work is perfect. Every work of God is perfect. So, even Lucifer, when he was created, how was he created? If Bible says that all his works are perfect, then surely this creation of God also should have been perfect. But today, the people have the imagination that uh, Satan means, Lucifer means, how is he? He's having two horns, full black or full reddish in color and his eyes is full of uh, you see fire red eyes uh, and he has four canine teeth uh, sharp canine teeth uh, and if you open his mouth uh, fire will be coming like a, as it comes out for the dragon having sharp teeth nails you see fingers and he should be having a tail you see, this is the imagination of uh, how the Lucifer looks uh, you see but what does the Bible say all the works of God are perfect. Then surely, even Lucifer was created, he should have been created perfect now. Let us see how Lucifer was created. Ezekiel 28, 12. Ezekiel 28, 12. Stephen, brother, can you read? Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, thou sealest up the sum Full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Ah, those sealist of the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Oh, oh. here you see, how was uh, Lucifer? It seems uh, he was uh, full of wisdom, perfect in beauty. But you may tell, brother, where is uh, Lucifer is given? It says about uh, King of Tyrus. Huh? Correct, no? But how come you are comparing it to Lucifer? You may tell. Read verse 13. Stephen, the reader, verse 13. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Ah, okay, brother. See, where was the king of Tyrus? In the garden of Eden. Huh? Tyrus was in the garden of Eden. Huh? Now read verse 14 also, brother. Huh? Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thine tablets, I'm sorry, tabrets. Yes, and? Okay. Continue. It is not in display, yeah. If you have the Bible, you can read from the Bible. Verse 14. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm getting there, right there. Okay, okay. Exactly 28, yeah, fine. 13, 14. Hmm. Right. I'll read from the beginning there. 
Hmm. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Ah, now read and verse 14. The stone was thine covering, the sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thine pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Thou was, thou art the anointed cherub that covered Ah, and I have said thee so. See what does the Bible God say? Anointed cherub. Cherub. God anointed cherub. Now, how come the you see, King of Tyrus is a anointed cherub? Cherub is actually a reference to the angel. So, here you see, who is the angel who was in Garden of Eden? You see, the anointed cherub, it was Lucifer. none other than Lucifer. We will see. How Lucifer replaced, you see, how was Lucifer is himself? Here, the king of Tyrus is compared to Lucifer because of the character features, dear brethren. You see, so it was a type and anti-type. Remember the first class, how to study the Bible? We have seen the various languages in the Bible. One of the languages is type and anti-type. So here, similarly, you see, Lucifer was full of wisdom, perfect in beauty. That is how Lucifer was created and placed in the Garden of Eden as an anointed cherub to protect man from falling further into sin. So Lucifer was uh, beautiful to look at. You see, the Bible says that uh, you know, if Lucifer comes in front of us, we will... You see, huh? falls prostrate before him huh? as if uh, he's like an angel. Uh, you see, see the Bible says, uh, 2 Corinthians 11 14. 2 Corinthians 11 14. Uh, Sahaja Buddha, can you read 2 Corinthians 11 14? Yes, sir. And no wonder for Satan himself must that. As an angel of light. Hmm? Satan himself is uh, massacred as an angel of light. He himself is transformed as an angel of light. It's always still, uh, Satan to look at. Uh, uh, not a uh, tail. Uh, you see, uh, horns and canines. No. <laughs> he is so beautiful. He looks like a beautiful, sparkling angel. You know, the Bible calls Lucifer as morning star. Read Isaiah 14, 12. Abhishek Badar, can you read Isaiah 14, 12? Okay, I'll read. One second. Yes, I hear. 14, 12. How are you fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How are you cut down to the ground? What which dish to weaken the nation? See, for you, how are thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of morning? What is this uh, Lucifer called as son of morning? You know, the word Lucifer actually means you see, a morning star. That's what is called as son of morning. That means, what is this morning star? If you see, it is a reference given to planet Jupiter early in the morning. If you see in the sky, this planet Jupiter shines like a bright star, it seems. So, this signifies the early creation of God. You see, who I created. And Lucifer was one of the early creations of God. Now, who is the other morning star in the Bible? Does anybody know? There is another morning star in the Bible. Huh? Jesus himself. Jesus. Ah, Jesus. Jesus himself. Very good. Read, brother. Stephen, brother. Revelation 22, 16. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to you these things in the churches. I am the root and offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Bright and morning star. So Jesus is a bright morning star. Okay. If Jesus is also the morning star, and Lucifer is also morning star, uh, then they should be together now. Were they together at once upon a time? Yes. The Bible says when the creation of earth was happening, they were together. Read Job 38, 6. 
Job 38.6. Binod Mother, can you read Job 38.6? Okay, sir. Job 38.6. Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened, or who laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning star sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Mm, you see, what happened is when the foundations for the earth was laid, what happened? The morning stars. Star means one. Stars means plural, multiple, two. If you see in the Bible, two morning stars. They sang together, it seems. Sir. That means what? Lucifer will be dark, black and Jesus will be white. They will be singing songs together. One with a tail. Uh, uh, full of fiery eyes, full of fire in the mouth. They songs, uh, sang songs together. Uh. No, dear brother, he was a wonderful creation of God. He was also the morning star. He was an angel. Uh. You see, dear brother, they shouted with uh, joy with all the angels when the earth was created. Uh. So this clearly proves that Lucifer was good until the creation of this earth. Uh. You see, and God had placed him in Garden of Eden. Ezekiel 28.14 Though it anointed cherub Though was in Garden of Eden after the creation of this earth God had placed Lucifer you see upon earth as a guardian angel to protect mankind. When all these things were created you see God created Adam and Eve. You see in his own image and God put a test you see, to see if uh, they would remain faithful to God or not. Isn't it? So just think, the newly created uh, being, Adam and Eve, they were given the entire dominion of the earth. Just think about this one. God had never tested Adam and Eve. Without even testing their loyalty, the entire earth was given to them to have dominion, to be king and queen of this earth. You see, therefore, to test if they would really be faithful to God or not, God kept a small test saying, you can eat freely of all the trees, but only of one tree you should never eat. Which is the tree? Which is the tree? Read Genesis 2.17. Emmanuel brother, please read Genesis 2.17. Genesis 2.17. But you must not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat from it, you will certainly die. Ah, you see, you should not eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, not apple. You see, in the day you eat the, the fruit thereof, you shall surely die. Everybody thinks that uh, Adam ate that uh, apple. So this is called as Adam's apple. No, Adam uh, ate apple also. But this is not the fruit, forbidden fruit. Uh. You see, the forbidden fruit name was good and evil. Why that name good and evil? We see at the end of the subject. Uh. So just to check his loyalty... God had put a small test. Imagine if he joined for a company. On the day of joining, will they give lakhs of rupees for us to go and deposit in the bank? No. Why? Without proving our faithfulness to them, how will they give such a responsibility to us? Similarly, God without testing Adam and Eve given the entire dominion. So to test them, God told not to eat that fruit. And after placing Adam and Eve, God did go. What did God do? God had also placed Lucifer. And Lucifer was what? In the Garden of Eden. Was he king? Was he prince? No. The Bible says, Ezekiel 28.14, we just have read, the thou art an anointed cherub that covereth. Read Ezekiel 28.14. Sai Buddha, read Ezekiel 28.14 in your Bible. Yes, brother. You were anointed as a guardian cherub, for so I ordained you. Ah, you were... Guardian cherub. See, clearly told no guardian cherub. So what was he guarding? The new couple. The new, you see, prince of this earth. He was supposed to be a guardian for them. Imagine Lucifer. How was he? He was a morning star next to Jesus. Along with Jesus, he has laid the foundation of, for this earth. 
he should have given him the dominion to be king of this earth he was made the guardian like a watchman while adam and eve were made princes so he could not humble himself to such an extent to be a guardian angel hence he thought of becoming the king himself like for example imagine if you are a manager of the company and suddenly if a boss comes and tells it uh, from tomorrow you're not the manager you should work like a watchman how do we feel uh, daily seeing our boss going and coming soliting him all sorts of uh, evil thoughts will come in our mind it was the same thing that came to lucifer's mind uh, that is the time that uh, you see evil uh, generated in him see ezekiel 28 15 shall you brother continue 28 15 also you read brother ha huh? you were blameless in your ways from the day you were created till wickedness was found in you till wickedness was found in you you see when was that found after placing him in garden of eden not before the brethren not that uh, he fell from heaven like that only and god threw him out uh, and he came to uh, fell on heaven no no god had placed him in garden of eden that is the very sin you see huh? same way as we get multiple thoughts similarly lucifer also thought i will be like the most high as god has established his own kingdom i will also establish somehow he thought uh, to deceive this first king and queen and make them as his slaves so that he can be a king above them read isaiah 14 chapter 13 and 14 isaiah 30 14 chapter 13 and 14 stephen brother can you read isaiah 14 chapter 13, 13 and 14th verse 14th chapter But thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Ah, so what was his thought in his heart? He thought, I will ascend the heaven. I will exalt my throne. I am now a guardian cherub, but I'll exalt my throne above the stars of God. Who are the stars of God? Other stars, other angels, morning star. I will be higher than Jesus. I will put a throne. I will be a king. I will sit upon the mount of congregation, the sides of the north. All this is detailed subject is there. We will see in the future classes. God willing, says I will be like the most high. How the God is the creator. He is the master of the universe. He is the emperor. Similarly, I will be the emperor of this earth. With this thought in his heart, he deceived you. How did he deceive you? By using a serpent. How? The Bible says that he that the serpent came and spoke to Eve. Not really, did the serpent come and speak to Eve? No, 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 dear brother. The actions performed by a serpent were like words to Eve. Like for example, see what Lucifer would have done. Lucifer uh, would have made the serpent to eat the forbidden fruit, and seeing this one, immediately a thought. Uh, would have generated uh, in the mind of uh, eve you see huh? and uh, you see uh, the questions automatically is spontaneously comes in our mind you see no need to speak uh, you see automatically it comes out like for example imagine you are all sitting and listening to the classes imagine suddenly if uh, a cockroach goes before you what thoughts will generate in your mind huh? certain bit of thoughts and i will come now oh, cockroach is going i should now go and eat oh no no class is going on something will come is it it's the same way you see when he made the forbidden fruit to be eaten by the serpent he put a question in the mind of eve ha huh? had god really said that you should not eat of that uh, uh, tree ha huh? yeah immediately he would have reasoned in her mind and said yes surely god has said you see that you should not eat ha huh? But uh, why the serpent is uh, eating and still alive? This thought also would have come in even. No, 
then Satan would have replied, I or oh, you shall surely not die. You will not die. You see, Satan, Satan, serpent is dying. Uh, it is still alive, no? You all see it. Nothing will happen. Uh, then uh, uh, again, the question would have come. Then why did God tell not to eat? Uh, uh, God could have told not to eat, no? Then why did uh, God tell? For this one, Satan replied, saying, you shall be like God. God fears that you shall be like God. That is the reason. God is forbidding you to eat this good thing. Imagine. Huh. Immediately she thought, oh, if, if I can be like God, that's very good, no? That is the reason she ate the fruit. You know, this is the first question in the world. You know, in the Bible, you can't see any questions before this one. This is the first question in the Bible. Now, how did the question come? It came through the serpent. That is the reason the question mark, even today, is put like a serpent's wood. Why serpent's wood? See, the, all the other punctuation marks is different. But this punctuation mark is just exactly like the serpent should because this has come out from the serpent. And as uh, you see, uh, Eve was motivated to eat this fruit. Then who ate? Adam ate the fruit. You see, so who was deceived? Adam or Eve? Huh? Let us see what the Bible says. You see, First Timothy 2.14. Abhishek Bhutar, please read. First Timothy two fourteen. Okay, I will read one minute. <laughs> one Timothy two fourteen. Hmm. One time, one day. I'm sorting. One time. 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 It was the woman who was deceived and became a sinner. Very good, Buddha. So, Adam was not deceived. It was actually Eve that was deceived by the serpent. But Adam clearly knew that if he eats the forbidden fruit, he will surely die. And why did Adam eat? You know, why Adam ate? Adam actually committed suicide. He knew very well that if I eat the fruit, I will definitely die. Because he knew also very well that Eve has eaten the fruit and she will die. If she dies, if he she goes, what will be his condition? He will be alone in Garden of Eden. That is the reason Adam decided to die with Eve. That was the first uh, love story in the whole world, dear brethren. Today we have heard uh, so many love stories. No, Laila must know. He runs now. Romeo Juliet. Uh, you know? In spite of having so many girls in this world, much beautiful than the one whom they loved. They still even die for the only one girl. You see, as if there is no other girl at all. Huh? Imagine what can poor Adam do. She was the only one there. Huh? So he decided to die with Eve. And he did not have so much of faith on God that if Eve dies, God will definitely give him one more Eve. Hence, Adam ate the forbidden fruit. Once Adam ate the forbidden fruit, Sin entered into the world and they both were cast out of Garden of Eden. Where were they cast out? What was the condition of the earth? Let us read Genesis 3.17. Binod Buddha, can you read Genesis 3.17? Okay, sir. I will read uh, Genesis 3.17. Hmm. And on to Adam, he said, because thou hadst hearkened unto the, uh, I didn't understand. I didn't understand, sir. Can I read? Ah, uh, read from the Bible. I think the screen is covering a little bit. Uh. 317. Hmm. And unto Adam, he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thine wife, and has eaten of the tree, of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. 
in sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thongs also and thistles shall bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat a herb of the field. In the sweat of thine face thou shalt eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it thou wast taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. Okay. Adam was cast out from the Garden of Eden into the unfinished earth. The whole earth was not in the Garden of Eden condition. It was only the garden that is in Eden that was like a beautiful garden, but not the entire earth. The entire earth was in an unfinished condition. Hence, God cast them out into this unfinished earth and said, Cursed is the ground for thy sake, God. You shall eat the bread of the uh, of the, uh, bread with sorrow and with much sweat, uh, and uh, the ground shall bring thorns and thistles, uh, dear brethren. So Adam was cast off uh, into the unfinished earth, dear brethren. So lot of sufferings, uh, each and every death, uh, each and every pain, sorrow, sickness, everything. Uh, you see. This was a package which God had given to Adam. And we all know very well that it was not only Adam that was condemned, it was the entire race of mankind that was condemned. Dear brethren. Today, you see, mankind, you see, are dying more in death due to war than due to natural disasters. Dear brethren. More people die in war than in natural disasters. Like, for example, we know that Osama bin Laden. You see, we all know that Osama bin Laden was a great terrorist. But uh, few people only know that he was one of the CIA of America. He worked as a James Bond for America. But due to some small misunderstanding, he revolted against the Americans for whom he worked for many years. And that is how, what happened? A small friction of words became a war. Even today also that war is continuing in various ways, just because of one few words. Why? Because of man's selfishness, because of some ego, this war, you see, and a uh, lot of earthquakes happen in this world. Why? That is due to because of excess mining, uh, you see, and floods happen. Why? We also saw a tsunami in a Himalayan region, Uttarakhand and all. Why? Because of deforestation. If you keep on just chopping off all the trees and all, if the rain comes, what will happen now? Everything will come to the city in the form of flood, dear brethren. So this is all uh, man-made disasters, dear brethren. So all these things are due to man's selfishness. Okay. Now what does the Bible say? Let us read Isaiah 66, 1. Isaiah 66, uh, 1. Uh, Emmanuel, brother, can you read Isaiah 66, 1? Okay, Isaiah 66 1. <clears throat> this is what the Lord said. Heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house you will build for me? Where will my resting place be? Thank you, brother. The heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. That's what God says. What is the meaning of the heaven is my throne and uh, earth is my footstool? Does it uh, look like this one that God is sitting in heaven and putting his leg on the earth? No. Earth is a footstool, means uh, actually it's got a meaning. Fustul in the Bible actually means a place of learning. We all know very well in the olden days, the teachers, the guru, gurus, uh, they used to sit on this uh, chair or the throne like this one. And for the feet, they used to have a small stool, you see. And before the, in the front of that stool itself, uh, you see, on the floor, all the disciples used to sit, uh, you see. And that place where the disciples used to sit, uh, that was called as uh, Fustul or Gurukul. You see, in the Gurukul, the Fustul, you see, that was, uh, it was called as. Uh, similarly, Apostle Paul learned at the feet of Gamaliel. The Bible says, read Acts 22.3. Binod Mother, can you read Acts 22.3? Binod Mother, you're there? Shall I? Okay, stay with the read. Acts 22, 3. Hmm. I am verily a man, which am a Jew, born in Tarsus, a city in Cilicia, yet brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel, 
and taught according to the perfect manners of the Jew of the law of the fathers and was zealous towards God as you and, all are this day. And zealous towards God as you all are this day. Thank you, brother. So he says, uh, Apostle Paul was uh, brought up at the city at the feet of Gamaliel. So what do you mean by feet of Gamaliel? Did you really sit next to his feet and learn? That means a place of learning. Uh, dear brethren, so similarly when God says, earth is uh, my footstool, heaven is my throne, earth is footstool, that means earth is a place of learning. Now what does it mean by place of learning? You see, to teach somebody some things, there are actually four methods. So this is being taught in the school, sir. I don't know about you or this one. When we were in the school, this was taught. You see, the four methods of teaching. The first method is called as intuition. Intuition means there is no need for anybody to teach this is good, this is bad. You see, the evil and good, the difference between evil and good. Automatically, a person knows about this one. And this quality of intuition, only God is having. There is no need for anybody to teach God that this is good and this is evil. He knows everything. Okay, But this quality, man doesn't have. So, if Adam has to be taught what is good and what is evil, these four choices was there. Now, the first choice is not applicable to him because this quality is only applicable to God. Okay, next one. The second one is advice. Okay. Now, God had really advised him not to eat the forbidden fruit. So, once you eat the forbidden fruit, what will happen? Sin and death will enter into the world. So, advice did not actually work in the case of Adam. So, this failed. The third one was observation. If Adam had someone else to see in the Garden of Eden, to see and watch what actually sin and death means, he would have never ate the forbidden fruit. Isn't it? Adam had no other people. He was the first creation of God. So, he was the one who first sinned. He did not have the option to see somebody else and know what is the meaning of sin and what are his results so that uh, he may choose only good. So this one was a failure in Adam. But this which is failure in mankind is successful in the angels. Because angels don't have the condition of sin and death among them. But they are learning this from the conditions which are happening in mankind. Read 1 Corinthians 4 9. Sahaja Buddha, can you read 1 Corinthians 4 9? Yes, For it seems to me that God has put us apostles on display at the end of the procession, like those condemned to die in the arena. We have been made a spectacle. To the whole universe, the angels are well human beings. Mm, we have made spectacle to the whole universe, even to the angels, even to human beings. Mankind is made a spectacle. The angels are seeing what all is happening among mankind are learning the lesson. You see, dear brother. So this uh, third choice of teaching somebody about good and evil, you see. It was successful among the angels, but it was not uh, successful among Adam, mankind. The last thing was experience. You see, dear brethren, Adam sinned in Garden of Eden because he did not have experience. If he really had experience about what actually evil was and what actually evil will be, really, really dear brethren, he wouldn't have uh, Eat the forbidden fruit at all. So experience, moreover, is such a thing that it can't be infused into somebody. We can't infuse it. You see, it has to be gained by going through the process. Hence, as soon as we go for an interview, what is the first thing they ask? They ask, what's your experience? Why? Because with lack of experience, you could probably, possibly, completely spoil the entire company. That is the reason. Experience is very, very important thing. This can't be infused or put into somebody. This has to be gained. Adam sinned against God, you see, because of lack of experience. God permitted evil in this world because he knew 
that Adam with a lack of experience would definitely huh, commit sin. Hence, God had created only Garden of Eden in a beautiful condition, the rest of the world in an unfinished condition. So as soon as when he sinned, he sent out to the unfinished earth so to be suffer and learn and gain experience so that he may know the value of what it actually means to be good. Therefore, you know, God also knew that Adam, how he has committed sin against God, even Adam's children would also definitely commit sin against God. Why? Father has sinned because of lack of experience. Similarly, the whole world, his entire children also will sin without experience. Hence, God decided to permit evil, you see, in this world through Adam upon everybody. Hence, each and every human being were allowed to die in Adam. Read Romans 5.12. Stephen Mother, can you read Romans 5.12? Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon the entire humankind, and all have sinned. Mm. Therefore, as by one man, one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, you see? And so death passed upon all men, all God, you see, condemned everybody into death through one man, Adam. You see, because God knew as Adam has sinned without lack of experience, uh, yeah, you see, without experience, similarly the whole mankind will also sin without experience. Hence, everybody were permitted to die in Adam. See, 1 Corinthians 15.22. Abhishek Budar, can you read 1 Corinthians 15.22? Okay, I will read. First Corinthians 1522. For as in for as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. See, that is the reason it says, For as in Adam all die. All the people are dying in Adam, not because of the individual sin dear brethren. Read Jeremiah 31st chapter 29 and 30. Binod brother, are you there? Can you read Jeremiah 31, 29 and 30? Okay, sir. Jeremiah 31, 29, 30. Mm -hmm. uh, in those days, they shall say no more. The father have eaten a sure grab, and the children's teeth are set on edge. But every one shall die for his own antiquity. Every man that eaten the sore grabs, his teeth shall be set on edge. Mm. In those days, uh, they shall say no more. That the fathers have eaten the sore grape. Children's teeth are set on the edge. Who is the father? A father, Adam, ate the forbidden fruit. Because of which, our teeth is set on the edge. Everybody, every people are dying in Adam. But in Christ's kingdom, it won't be like that one. Everybody will die for their own sin. Hence, everybody are dying in Adam. Okay. Now, why did not God forgive Adam? God could have forgiven Adam, no? It was his first sin. Just imagine the new couple, they don't have anything, they don't know anything. It was the first sin they have sinned. God could have forgiven them, no? Jesus says, uh, forgive 70 times 7. Yeah? This is the first sin which they committed, no? God could have forgiven, no? Why did not God forgive? Why? Because if God would have forgiven Adam that day, then the lie which Satan told would have been true. And Adam and Eve would have lacked more faith on God. They would have lost that faith. Oh, then they would have thought of what actually Satan said was true. And moreover, dear brethren, you see, if God had forgiven Adam, it would be God's justice. Then what actually God told would have been a lie. That in the, in the day you eat the fruit, then you shall surely die. That would have been a lie. Okay. Then why God condemned everybody? You see, dear brethren, God knew that uh, as Adam has sinned, you see, huh? if God has forgiven Adam, then what will happen? Uh, next uh, generation of Adam will come. Children of Adam will come. They also will commit sin. 
He will also come and ask excuse from God. God, you have forgiven my father, Adam. Now forgive me also. I will also commit on sin. If God keeps on forgiving like this one, then where will be the justice of God? That is the reason God did not forgive them for this small sin, dear brethren. Hence, the whole world are dying in Adam. The whole, each and every grave is a witness of it. Okay. Now, what is the use of it? Now, what is the use of God permitting this one evil in this world? What use does it make? Dear brethren, we all know, you see, the meaning of antidote. You know, whenever the, we take any poisonous chemical, at the back side of it, uh, there's a diamond, uh, you see, a logo that is put, uh, you know, for each and every chemical, there is an antidote. You see, for each and every poison, there is an antidote. What is the poison? What is the antidote? The poison is a thing which causes harm, but antidote, antidote is a thing which nullifies the effect of that poison. When God permitted in evil in this world, dear brethren, he had an antidote in his hand. He had this one, then only permitted evil to come upon this world, dear brethren. You know, who is that antidote? It is none other than our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He had Jesus Christ in his hand. Hence, he permitted evil to come in this world. Hence, Jesus is called as the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Read Revelation 13, 8. Stephen, brother, can you read Revelation 13, 8? All that and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. One minute, sir. Okay, somebody else can read Revelation thirteen eight. Yeah. Hmm. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. The Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Even before the foundation was laid for the earth, God had decided that he should give Jesus as a sacrifice to redeem the entire mankind. Hence, the Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only son. That means God had planned beautifully everything, dear brethren. What is the plan of God now? The beautiful plan of God is mentioned in the name of the fruit which Adam and Eve ate. Now you tell me, what is the name of the fruit which Adam and Eve ate? Who can tell me? Who will answer me? Tell me. Nobody knows, sir. What is the name of the fruit which Adam and Eve ate? The knowledge of good and evil. Knowledge of good and good evil. Binod brother, Abhishek brother, Saiji brother. Emmanuel, brother, what is the name of the fruit? Knowledge of good and evil. Hmm. Knowledge of good and evil. Knowledge of good and evil. Now, why this name is given for this fruit? Have you ever wondered? Entire subject is there in that one only. You know, what is the meaning of knowledge of good and evil? You see, through Adam, the entire mankind... He is tasting today only bad, only evil for how many years? For a period of 6,000 years. For a period of 6,000 years in Adam, the entire mankind is suffering evil, evil, evil. That evil portion, that bad, knowledge of bad, knowledge of evil, the mankind is gaining from that fruit. But the other part is also there, no? Knowledge of good and evil. Evil they are tasting now. So when will the man can taste good? They will taste good at the second coming of Jesus. When Jesus returns the second coming, he will rule on this earth for a period of thousand years. Then the entire mankind will be resurrected and brought back to life on this earth. Then they will learn and understand the good portion of this fruit, dear brethren. You know, therefore, what the Bible says uh, that uh, this evil period of 6,000 years compared to night uh, and the Christ, 1,000 uh, years is compared to morning in the Bible. Let us read Psalms 30, verse 5. <clears throat> Psalms 30, verse 5. Abhishek, brother, can you read Psalms 30, verse 5? Psalms 
Psalms 30. Verse 5. Five. For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for life, weeping may endure for a night, for joy comes in the morning. See, what is it? Huh? His anger is for a moment, uh, but his favor is everlasting life. Uh, weeping may endure for a huh? night, uh, but joy cometh in the Morning. Huh? How come joy comes in the morning? Huh? Sadness comes in the morning. Whenever we wake uh, early in the morning, we need to go to office, work, school. Huh? We get a yo morning happened. Huh? But when the night comes, we sleep happily. But this verse is actually speaking about the night of sickness and sin of 6,000 years. It is only for a moment. But joy cometh in the morning. When the morning has to come, the sun has to rise. Who is the sun in the Bible? Who is the sun in the Bible? Jesus. Jesus, the son of righteousness, Malachi 4, chapter 1, 2, and 3. He will arise with healing in his wings and heal and bless everybody. He will wipe out every tears from everybody's eyes. Revelation 21, 4. Revelation 21, 4. Emmanuel, brother, can you read Revelation 21, 4? In Revelation 21, 4. Hmm. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death. Or mourning, or crying, or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. Okay, the former things have passed away, dear brethren. So all the world thing will pass away. This is the kingdom that God is going to establish on earth. Last week we saw no? the stone which came and hit became a huge mountain. What did Jesus say? Jesus went to each and every city and preached about this kingdom. You see, dear brethren. Therefore, the Bible says, "Huh, heaven is my throne." Earth is my footstool. The Bible also says that God is going to make this footstool a beautiful, glorious place. Read Isaiah chapter 60, verse 13. Sahaja brother, can you read Isaiah 60, verse 13? Uh, yes, brother. The glory of Lebanon will come to you, the uh, juniper, the fire and the cypress together to adorn my sanctuary and I will glorify the place for my feet. Mm, I will make the place of my feet glorious. Which is his place for his feet? Uh, heaven is his throne, earth is my footstool. That will be made glorious again at Jesus' second coming. Okay. Now, we all clearly understood why God has permitted evil so that mankind may gain experience. Now you answer the question, why God allowed evil first and then is going to allow good first? Why has he allowed a 6,000 years of evil first, then a 1,000 years of good later? Why? God could have done the reverse order, no? God could have allowed 6,000 years of good and later on 1,000 years of evil he could have allowed, no? Why did not God do it? Tell me, who can answer? Let me see. Who will answer? Why God permitted evil first rather than good? That evil may perish and goodness be forever eternal. Okay, how? You're almost correct, but how? The path of ungodly leads to destruction. But the path of godly leads to eternal life. Okay. Anybody else? Sahaja brother? Sorry brother. Okay. Emmanuel brother, want to give a try? Stephen brother? Everything will be restored. That's why. All that was now in the, in the fall shall be restored in the millennium. Okay. Good. We will see. Thank you. Uh, why God permitted evil first and later good? Because without the knowledge of evil, there is always a chance to sin against God. But with the knowledge of evil, there is always a lesser possibility 
that you will sin again. Like for example, I'll tell you. Like for example, we saw the four methods of, uh, you see, learning good and evil. Correct? The first method, intuition. Let us take example of cigarette smoking. You know, tell me, is cigarette smoking good or bad? Tell me, is cigarette smoking good or bad? Bad, bad of course. Bad. Oh, you, you, you so much reasoning means uh, you all want to drink. Huh? Huh? Share it. See, cigarette smoking is injurious to health. But how many people have this intuition? Some people have. No, it's not good for our health. We should not reverse smoke. Okay? So intuition works in some people. But still some people advise. You know, some people, they just uh, obey the advice of the elders. Should not smoke. You see, they would have put uh, on each and every cigarette pack with the color photo, they would put no, no. No cigarette uh, smoking cancers causes cancer. It is injurious for health. So people won't smoke. <laughs> so for some people, this advice is itself okay. But some people will tell, hey, what will happen? Nothing will happen. See my grandpa, he is smoking for 80 years, he is still healthy. For those people, observation is required. If they take them to cancer hospital and see what all things are happening, some people will observe and leave it. Oh, don't you, you, If we smoke, all these things will happen. Huh? Better don't smoke. Still, some people are there. They won't even quit at all until they get that experience. Once they get, uh, you see, that the tumor and cancer. And uh, imagine if all the treatment is given and if cancer is cured, uh, for the person who has gained that experience, if we offer him crores and crores of rupees and tell him to just to smoke only for once, will he smoke? Tell me, will he smoke? No, no, no. No, no he won't smoke. Why? Because he has that experience of going yeah. through like cancer treatment after suffering so much, who will choose uh, to smoke again? No. That is the value of experience. Table. It is the same with sin. God has permitted evil in this world for 6,000 years so mankind may gain that complete experience of evil. You see? Thorough experience. So that when good is permitted, they may choose between good and evil and select only good. That is the reason so many people fed up and get commit suicide. Why? They want only good. They don't want evil. Dear brethren, therefore God permitted evil. All the entire points what I told you, it is given in just two verses in the Bible. Romans 8 chapter verse 20 and 21. Let us read Romans 8 chapter 20 and 21. Let us read one by one and go. Who can read? Revelation, Romans 8, 20 and 21. Can somebody read? For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it. In the power. Mm. See? Yes. See, this uh, evil that is permitted in this world, you see, it was not permitted willingly. Oh, they should always commit sin. You should believe. No, no, no. It was permitted to suffer with the hope of who permitted it. God permitted it. No, He had a hope. He has a plan. It is because of that plan that is allowed evil to work in this world. What is his plan? Continue with that. Huh? That the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. Ah, what is his plan? That one day all the people who are suffering shall be liberated, shall be delivered from this bondage and become the children of God. That is the reason God wanted man to gain this experience. Hence, he has permitted evil in this world. Therefore, Whenever we see evil in this world, let us remember these verses and remember the plan of God. That God has got a beautiful plan. A plan, God wants each and every mankind to gain experience and 
the thousand years, so that in the thousand years they may choose good. Okay, Lord, and the blessings upon these word and words. Anybody has got any questions, any doubts, you can ask.